Okay, it's time to secure the admin panel. Now we could use an authentication library and in a live application, I just might. But where's the fun in that? Let's build authentication from scratch. Okay, now let's start simple and create a login form. It will be loaded when we go to admin slash user slash login. For that URL to work, let's go over to the admin directory in controllers and create a user controller. We'll also add a method called login and set a variable called this data subview. Now we'll need that subview in a minute. Next, we'll load the modal layout. You remember that's the layout we created in last video. Okay, now let's open up the modal layout. And this is where the subview variable we just created comes in. That subview will be loaded here. So we only need a single modal layout to display all of our modal screens. And we'll just set the subview to be loaded inside of our controller. Remember we set the subview to admin user login. Now let's go and create that subview. First, we'll need to create a new folder called user. And inside of that view folder, we'll add a new view file called login. Inside of that view, we'll need to create a couple of divs and I'll use Zen coding for that. Now, first of all, we'll need a div with a class of modal header. And secondly, we'll need a div with a class of modal body. Now let's set a heading within modal header to show the user he's on a login page. Next, we'll create a form with an opening tag and a closing tag. It will be nothing fancy, we'll just use Codeigniter's default form functions for that. Now let's remember to load the form helper later on. Now we need to choose a markup for the form. Now I could just use Twitter bootstrap form layouts, but they're a little too verbose to my liking. So let's just keep it simple and create a table containing just a couple of rows. We'll just make sure the table styling matches that of Twitter bootstrap so we can make it look good. We'll need two form fields, namely email and password. Now they'll both get a label and again, we'll use some form functions to render them. We'll also create a submit button and let's just add a little bit of styling there to make it appear like a proper button. Now let's finish with echoing form validation errors if we have any. Of course, we'll need to load the form validation library for that, but we'll take care of it. Now let's load the necessary helpers and libraries to get us on our way. Just open up autoload.php and see what we have autoloaded so far. Well, there's the database library and the URL and HTML helpers. And that's good because we'll need those everywhere in our application. Okay, now we'll also be using the form helper and the form validation library in our admin panel a lot. So let's just load them inside of our admin controller. Open up admin controller and go into the constructor and let's load the form helper and form validation library there. Okay, and now we've loaded all necessary helpers and libraries. It's time for us to view the form inside of the browser. And now you can see we're getting an error there. And that's because we forgot to set the subview. So let's go back to the user controller and add that subview right there. Now let's go back to the browser and reload. And sure enough, there's our form. Now the next step is to add validation to our login form. Remember the rules property we set here in my model well, that's where we'll store our validation rules. And that reminds me, this variable should be cast as public, not as protected. And that's because we need to be able to load it inside of the controller. Let's first create a user model so we can set up the validation rules for a user. Now I've set up a snippet to quickly add code to that model. We'll call the code user underscore M and it will extend my model. Now let's just set the properties for this model. The table name will be users and we'll just use the default values for primary key, primary filter and timestamps. So we don't need to set those here. And we'll order the results by name. And we'll also add some validation rules for the login form. Now that needs to be public. Now the rules property will be an array and it will follow the code igniter form validation conventions. So we'll just have to add a key for every field and that key will be equal to an array as well. Now each field will contain three keys, namely field, label, 
and rules. So let's go ahead and create those. First, we'll set an email field with a label of email. Let's just trim it, make it a require field, make sure we have a valid email, and let's pass it through an XSS filter. And lastly, we'll need a password field, and that will just be trimmed and required. We'll just hash the value, so you know there's no need for XSS filtering on that field. If we want to use the rules in the user model, we'll need to load them. So let's just open up admin controller again, and we'll be using the user model a lot, so let's just load it here. So now that we've set up our rules, let's just implement validation. Open up the user controller again, and store the rules from the user model in a variable called rules. Next, we'll add these rules to the form validation library, like so. And all we need to do is pass the rules variable. Now finally, let's add a conditional. Inside of that conditional, we'll run the validation. Now if it returns true, the form passed validation, and we can log in the user and redirect them. And we'll add the code for that later. Now let's see if the form works like it should. I'll just post the form without setting any credentials, and that should trigger validation errors. And sure enough, it does. Now let's also check if the validation for email works the way we expect it to. And sure enough, that works as well. Finally, I'll try and pass some proper values into the form, and that should not trigger any errors at all. I know we have no errors, so that's good. So, now that we've got our login form working, we're ready to add our authentication code, and let's do that in the next video.